obviously the movie is quite different than your previous slower, quieter, more atmospheric. <laughs> Uh, film. So uh, I've, we also saw a lot of these films that were developing uh, specifically with Aquarius, where you are fighting a certain caste, a certain system, uh, dealing with um, gentrification, but, but coming way um, beyond. So can you talk at what point you decided to make this film? Because we saw it coming, uh, and then we can expand. But maybe just with the beginning, you've worked together in all your films, correct, with Giuliano, and Sonia obviously was in uh, Aquarius. Uh, yes, I... In fact, um, Bacurau was supposed to be shot before Aquarius, mm -hmm. but the script wasn't ready, and the script for Aquarius was written very quickly, and it just clicked very fast, and, um, and that's when we set out to make um, Aquarius. But Bacurau was an idea that me and Juliano had been playing with since 2009, so it's 10 years now. And, um, and it went through changes and went through, you know, life. Uh, and I did Neighboring Sounds and I did uh, Aquarius, and, and then the time came for us to get serious about Bacurau and uh, and I think it was a good thing because I was more experienced, I was stronger after the experience with Aquarius and Neighboring Sounds and I really think that I keep making the same film over and over again. <laughs> they, they kind of look different but uh, they're very similar. Uh, Neighboring Sounds has many similarities with this one. It's, uh, it's a kohal, uh, it's a choir kind of um, ensemble film. You can't really tell who's the main character, and I think that's a, a beautiful thing. But I also think it's a beautiful thing in Aquarius where you can tell who's the main character. And you can tell who's the queen of fucking everything, which is uh, Sonia's character in, uh, in, in, in Aquarius. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, the political... Um Situation has changed a lot in, in Brazil since then, but also oh, yeah. in North America. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can elaborate on this uh, further, but I was wondering, um, since you, were, you wrote this before, like, did you have the intention to make this as a genre film? It's, there's a little bit of sci-fi, a lot of Western, uh, but it's also a genre film. So was, you, was it your intention back in the days, or it came yeah, as a... We always, we always love genre films. Yeah. We always talked about genre films. Our friendship is based in the love for genre films. So yeah, we always wanted to do a film like that. And Brazil is a very uh, rich, rich uh, place to... Uh, to provide ideas for genre films, as you can see now. So, yeah, and in 2009, Brazil, uh, I, I, I kind of miss that Brazil very much. <laughs> and the problems were, uh, weren't, uh, aren't that big, but we always have problems in Brazil. And I think when, when, when you make a, a genre film, using real problems of the society, it's the right way to do a genre film. So, yeah, that's it. Somehow, uh, historically, if you go back um, to the history of Brazilian cinema, you don't really see a lot of genre, you know, horror films and action films and thrillers. And of course, in the 60s, we have a genius, uh, José Mojica Marins, uh, known in the U.S. as Coffin Joe, José do Cachão. He is a, an amazing artist and filmmaker. One and of the best of history, I can say yes, that. Yes, and, and he was um, very much misunderstood in, within the, you know, the realm of Brazilian cinema because Brazilian cinema went the other way, went towards uh, social realism and, uh, and, of course, comedies, what we call the chanchadas. Um, so the new generation of Brazilian cinema, and I include myself in this generation, we, we are more intimate with the idea of, uh, I mean, we grew up watching uh, wonderful American films, which have uh, 
an interesting uh, relationship with the idea of genre films. And, uh, and I think there is a new moment in Brazilian cinema which is very diverse. And, you know, we have werewolf films now and we have uh, uh, film, horror films and it, it's more diverse and, and I, like, I like it very much and I'm happy that Bacurau comes to, uh, to, to, to be part of the game. You know. do, you, do you think it um, makes it easier to make it into a political, contemporary and social um, commentary on what's happening using genre? As opposed to, you know, like documentaries or like big drama? I don't think it's easier. I think it's even harder mm -hmm. because we, we can uh, put ourselves in a position very, very bad of making fun of uh, something very serious uh, or just uh, made a, uh, a wrong statement about something. So we need to be very careful to deal with uh, genre films. Uh, we take uh, genre films very seriously, you know. Uh, the problem with some genre films is that they, they don't uh, respect uh, the, you know, the work of cinema too much. They just want to, they only think about having fun and make some uh, heads exploding and blood all over the place. And I don't think violence is some uh, kind of funny thing to, to portray, you know, in a film. So you have to be very careful when you make a genre film. I, I think that's it. Yeah. I think it comes out, um, uh, in a way I see where your question comes from because once we realized we were, we, we were making a western, for example, uh, I, could, I could now think, I could feel more comfortable, uh, for example, uh, with dealing with uh, graphic violence, which I did not deal with in Aquarius or Neighboring Sounds. Everything was very much suggested. I think the violence in Aquarius is very much uh, kind of psychological and uh, you, you never know what's, what's going to happen. But now in Bacurau, you, you can really go um, all the way and, uh, and present uh, dramatic situations which actually involve, uh, you know, blood and uh, graphic violence. So in that sense, um, the political aspects, they become more overt and more... Um, and, and clearer, I think, in terms of uh, the idea of genre. Yeah. Um, you've worked with uh, Sonia before, so at what point did you write something for her in this film? And then bringing Udo here and the rest of the cast. I mean, Udo and Sonia together, it's a contest of stare, and it's pretty scary. You don't really want to be on either side. <laughs> um, so it was, um, you know, can you talk a little bit about uh, bringing Sonia into that very specific role that she plays very well, and then how she would yeah. bounce back from... Me and Juliana did a very dangerous thing, which is to write a role thinking about someone. <laughs> <laughs> It's dangerous yes. because you, you get, you get e emotionally attached to the idea of someone playing the role and you don't know if the person will be interested in, in the role you wrote. But we had a happy ending and she seemed to love Dominguez and she's here with us tonight. Yeah, um, <laughs> so... <laughs> um, to me, after like playing Aquarius with the, the, the crew and the cast and everybody in Aquarius, I found a new universe that I haven't found before as a whole in Brazil. And, um, or, you know, I found a group of people that I, I like to work with, but, you know, it, it didn't have the second step or the continuation of that love and then group of people working together. So I really ask them that I want to be in the next movie. <laughs> <laughs> then they thought about me to do the, <laughs> the character. So to me, as you say, it, it is subtle. The violence is more psychological. 
in uh, Aquarius, the, the people that saw Aquarius know the torture that the, this woman goes through, you know, until she explode and uh, against this world of violence and, and, and everything. And here in Bacurau, you know, for me to start with the scene that is her introduction, you know, it is like, um, Everybody feels differently about that, but I think that to me, I want really to go as they did too, you know, to the top of it, you know, it's like, it is asking, it, the only thing that we know is like we're born, but everybody forgets that we're going to die. That's the thing to me in that scene that the question is, you know, why people die, you know? Why do they leave us? Why, and the pain is, uh, it, they scream and the, the cursing and everything is the cursing of love to me that Domingas really feel for this woman, you know, that is the leader of the community and she's leaving and it's so unfair when people die. So uh, I think in Bacurau, uh, I had the opportunity to, to, to also, you know, all of us, the, the huge cast, you know, they, they, they all feel the stage if they are all here, you know, everyone, it is important. And it is a film, there is no extras in the film. Everybody is there, if they are speaking or not is different, but you know, it is a film, it is an ensemble and everybody has this uh, opportunity of stepping in and say something, you know, and the way it reflects to the audience changes. You know, one wants to be Lunga, the other one wants to be, nobody wants to be the mayor. <laughs> Does anybody? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, nice guy. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so anyhow, in a way, I found my own character and my own film. And because the film, it is in the future, and that's the thing that I cared the most. I always told them, there is a scene that I cannot see is when the boy is killed. To me, that, that is like really, it is to me way too much. And, uh, um, you know, incredibly, this is the present right now. And uh, there is a special character to me. There is Kawan, who everybody says the boy, right, in the scene. He's sitting and uh, the motorcycle guys ask, who is who born who, who's born in, in Bacurau? What what it is a person born in Bacurau? And he says, gente, people. So this boy, he's little, he's small, but he knows he has already because where he lives, the environment he's in, he knows he's a person and he deserves respect. So to me, the children in the film is my the, the, the character that I chose because Oli said that. And I keep saying, the only thing that I really hope it is that all the children in this planet can fulfill their destiny. Otherwise, what's the point? Did you write the film with Sonia, or did she write the film for you? She, she <laughs> did you write the film with them, or for them? Yes, I did. <laughs> Sonia, give me the new scene. Yes. No, no, we, we wrote it thinking about her. And, and, uh, and then I sent her the script without, oh yeah, well, yeah, this is the script. And then she answered uh, Dominguez with a question mark. Yes, Dominguez. Yeah, it was text, so you know how that goes. Dominguez? <laughs> Dominguez. It was in... 
And I remember the thing that you started to do with the voice and sending. What voice? <laughs> yes, sending on the phone for Audio us. messages with the new voice, yes. <laughs> now, Clever suggested, oh, Sonia was thinking, what about to, to change? You know, we have the meeting in person, not in text. And uh, he said, I was thinking, Dominguez, to have a voice. Like, you know, what kind of voice? And so the, he, they are going to meet, you know? 60 years of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> and to meet with Silvero, actually. And, and then I send him a message saying some, like, Hey, o Kleber, o que é que está acontecendo? O que é que vocês estão fazendo aí? Por que vocês não me chamaram? Something like that, scary, right? I thought it was awesome. <laughs> well, it, it was good that they kept it in the film. Um, can you and can you talk about bringing Udo? Oh. Udo is. Oh, is that Udo is one of too the. Too painful. <laughs> no, Udo is one of the most amazing people. I know, and uh, we met in Palm Springs, where he lives, he, the, at the Palm Springs Film Festival, and uh, and uh, yeah, I was introduced to him, and we drank a lot of <laughs> alcohol uh, for one hour, and then and then he says, "No, cut the bullshit. Do you have a script for me?" And, <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, I might have a, I might have something." And then I sent a message to Julian. I says. You, my job you, did like this. You think, <laughs> you, what, what would you, would you like Wudu Kier in the film? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's an amazing man and um, I, 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 yeah, we talked so much about, you know, Fassbinder and uh, Lars von Trier and uh, Gus Van Sant and Madonna. And he's a bon vivant and he took uh, Andy Sonia on, on a date. He um, took me on a date yeah. in this little town, Parelias, a very little, little town. May I? So he says, may I? So he says, tomorrow we're going to have a date. And I say, okay. 12 o'clock. I said, okay. So my door, 12 noon. I said, oh, on time. I opened the door. He had a, um, a suit on. In, 37 in, degrees centigrade. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> with a tie, hair, like everything. And uh, I say, I don't have a, a dress, I don't have anything. Would do. He says, doesn't matter, darling, let's go. So then, <laughs> the place to go, you know, he gave, I have the picture, somebody took the picture of our date. Then we go to the bakery in town, you know? <laughs> And this, to me, it is, from the, the time that I was there, it was so beautiful. And that's Udo. So romantic, so beautiful, so... He sent me, oh, he asked me to say hello to everybody and send his love. He's not here, but... <laughs> no, he told he sent me a, a, a message, an email, not text, email. And... Uh, but he asked me, please send my love to everybody. And he goes, oh, I'm so happy and everything. That's Udu. He is the kindest person, isn't he? He's adorable. I just have to say that I feel very, very fortunate um, that I have worked twice with Sonia Braga and once with Udo Kier. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's amazing. A round of applause. It is for me. Uh, maybe we can take a few questions for us from the audience. We have microphones, I believe. Yes. Uh, there's someone here? Yes. I love your films. Thank you. And this might replace Neighboring Sounds as my favorite among all three. And I watch all three films here. But quickly before I pose a question, just a quick commentary, that I couldn't help but think if Brazil rose up and wielded community power like Bacurau against Bolsonaro, wow. I mean, that's a, the that's a first thing that uh, occurred to me. But anyway, so uh, uh, Mr. Philo, I will have you choose one of these two questions. One, whichever you like to answer. I found it very amusing that you chose 
Americans to be the hit squad. Is this a nod to American violence or violence in American society and all the other terrorist genres here? The second question is in all of your three films, there's always going to be an exploration or something on carnal desire without fail. So I'm without what? Fail. You always have, you know, something about carnal desire. I can't forget the uh, washing machine and neighboring sounds as a, an object of desire. But anyway, I'll have you choose from those two questions, whichever you like. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I mean, me, me and Juliana, we talked a lot about um, history. And I think history gives you a, a, a pretty good um, idea of how far you can go when you tell a story. Uh, because it's all, it's, it's all been done and, and it, everything has basically happened. You can go back to the Romans and, you know, invasions and Genghis Khan and the, the war in Bosnia and uh, Serbia. The Vietnam War um, is something that we discussed uh, extensively. In fact, um, for us, Bakurao is a microscopic reenactment of the, Viet of the Vietnam War. And um, once we thought about that, once we, we locked that idea, we developed the script, which resulted in the film that you saw. Um, but at the same time, um, we have a deep love for American cinema from the 70s. Um, we are not the only ones. Many people love uh, the American cinema that was made in this country in the 70s. And they were very, uh, they were beautiful and harsh and tough. And they told their stories quite well. And they were also, uh, there was, it was also an interesting moment when violence became stronger on screen. Uh, particularly, I always think about the year 1971. It was a very interesting year in terms of cinema, um, exploring new levels of how to depict violence. And some of those films were, they presented revisions of of how the American Western uh, showed the Indians, the Native Americans. Because in the 30s and 40s, uh, the, the Native Americans were basically zombies shot from a distance. Uh, they were... And the invaders. The invaders, they were the others. Uh, so in Bakurao, after thinking all of those elements and many more which we don't have time to discuss, we came up with the idea of having these American characters, which in no way, of course, represent the whole of the United States, which is an amazingly complex uh, society. <laughs> and there's a German and a guy from England also. Yeah, it's true. Good point, <laughs> yes. <laughs> White man from the North Hemisphere. Yeah. And, and last night, uh, I got a question, we got a question uh, from somebody at the Alice Tully Hall, um, and it, the person seemed to be a little disturbed by the fact that uh, Americans uh, were the heavies uh, in Bakurao. And, and all, all I could say was, why not? You know? <laughs> so, and uh, it is true also that there is a, a, a very peculiar history of violence in this country, the same way that there is a history of violence in Brazil. And of course, if you look at Great Britain, uh, genocide. Um, if you go into each individual culture, you know, French history is complicated. But in this film, the villains are Americans, and, and I love these villains. They are great villains. <laughs> and the actors are very, very, very different from th those characters, so... Yeah, I just want to say that. I said that the actors are very, very different from the characters. Yes, they're amazing people. Yes. <laughs> but, um, but I don't know, maybe I, I, we should pass the microphone to one of our uh, amazing friends and American citizens and maybe they can say a few words about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, hi, I'm Brian. Thank you. Um, I, I was at the Alice Tully Hall last night when that question was posed, why the Americans are the heavies. And I loved Kleber's answer, because I think why not is a good question. And it's not just a joke, it's not dismissive. I think it's a, it's a challenge, it's a response. Tell me why they shouldn't be. I am an American. I live in Brazil. I have lived in Brazil for almost a decade. I have an amazing Brazilian wife who's here with me. I have two wonderful Brazilian children. And uh, it's been an interesting experience to see my country from a distance and how much it's changed over the last 10 years. And to also look from a perspective of maturity and realize that it hasn't, maybe it hasn't changed. You know, my perspective has changed. I've seen it, but maybe uh, I love this country. I'm incredibly proud to be an American. I'm incredibly proud of the best things that the country stands for, but I agree. There is a incredibly sad vein of violence in this culture. Um, and the daily reports that we see of school shootings and public shootings and this sort of like refusal to acknowledge that when we're kids, we grow up watching movies where we are taught the solution is uh, shoot the bad guy. When you have a problem, you punch it in the face or you shoot it or you do. And there's that wonderful cliche in every action movie, which I love just as much as you guys, in the, where the good guy beats the bad guy and he could kill him, but he doesn't. He walks away because he's the good guy. And then the bad guy comes around just enough to make that one last attempt, which justifies the good guy turning and killing him. And that always kind of troubled me a little bit. So uh, I digress, I agree, Clever. The question is not why are the Americans the bad guys? It's certainly not a criticism of the society as a whole or the people, but I think it's a very tough question to answer. Why not? Tell me why they shouldn't be. Thank you. I, I wish we would have more time to talk because there was many more questions about also how you made the film, um, the cinematography, which is exquisite, the sound, the use of the song. Um, but you'll have to come back <laughs> because we're running out of time. But thank you again for being here uh, tonight. Thank you. The and film. Thank you, the thank you all. Thank you, thank thank you very much. Nice night.